Hey, what's up, sysadmins? Today, I've got an epic tutorial lined up for you, a masterclass in installing VMware vCenter 8. With vCenter 8, you'll have an even more centralized, intelligent hub to control your virtual machines and ESXi hosts. But before we dive into this virtualization land, then have a look here. This is what it looks like. And you can even change it to dark mode, which I think is awesome. Alrighty, crew, it is showtime. Let's head on over to customerconnect.vmware.com and we're going to be downloading the ISO image. Once you're at the site, let's go ahead and click on products and accounts and then let's click on all products. Just to the right of VMware vSphere, we're going to go ahead and we're going to click on download product. By default, you're probably already going to see the latest version here as version 8. And so we're going to go down and we're going to download VMware vCenter server at the time of this video, it is 8.0 update 1C. So we're going to go and click on go to downloads. The image that we're going to be downloading today is VMware vCenter server appliance. Click on download now. It will ask you to log into your account. Once you've logged into your account, you'll be able to download the ISO image. I've already done this because as you can see, it is a nine gigabyte image and I've placed it into a folder right here called vCenter 8. Now we are ready to rock. What we're going to do is right click on this ISO image and I'm going to select mount and then we're going to go into the VCSA UI installer. Once we're in there, we'll go Win32 and then we're just going to double click on installer.exe. When that loads, you'll see up on screen we have four different options and you probably guessed it today, we are using the install option. Now the vCenter 8 installation is broken up into two stages. The first stage being the deployment of the virtual machine on an ESXi host. And then the second stage is the setup and configuration of the vCenter server. If this is your first vCenter installation, then I'm pretty excited for you. We're going to go ahead here and we're going to click next. The end user license agreement. Of course, we're going to accept this. Let's go ahead and click on I accept and then we'll just click next. In step number three, it is asking us for our underlying ESXi host. I'm going to enter in my ESXi host details here. Once all your details are filled in, let's go ahead and click next. This is the certificate warning for the ESXi host. I'm just going to click yes. Now in screen number four, we need to provide a virtual machine name for our vCenter. I'm just going to keep it simple. I'm going to call mine vCenter 8. And then we need to set a root password for our appliance. We're making good time here, guys. We are now halfway through this wizard. And on this screen, it is asking us to set a deployment size. And here we're talking about resources. We're talking about vCPUs, memory and storage. Now that table, it is quite self-explanatory. I'm only running this in a lab. I'm going to be selecting tiny and we're going to go and hit next. Now, step number six, guys, it's asking us which data store we want to install the virtual machine into. I'm going to be installing mine into the VM lab management SSD one. These data stores, remember, are coming from my ESXi host. Once you have yours selected, go ahead and click next. We're now onto the second last step of the wizard. And here we're presented with our network configuration. There's quite a few settings here. We're gonna be stepping through them one by one. The first one being the network. This is where you want your virtual machine connected into. I'm gonna be selecting my network called Site A MGMT. So that's already up on screen. If we move on to IP version, we have IPv4, going to be leaving that as IPv4. The IP assignment, we are definitely using static. So we've got that selected. And now I'm going to be typing in my fully qualified domain name. The fully qualified domain name is extremely important in this setup. You need to make sure that you have DNS infrastructure in place that's able to handle forward and reverse DNS lookups for this DNS name. If you haven't set up a DNS infrastructure before, I have recorded a previous video that I'm gonna put up on screen here. And within that video, I do mention about setting forward and reverse lookups. Now moving right along, we have our IP address. I'm gonna be setting mine to 192.168.1.25. The subnet mask is a slash 24, or in simpler terms, 255.255.255.0. My default gateway is 192.168.1.1. And for DNS servers, I'm going to be entering the IP address of my Active Directory domain controller. The rest of the settings I'm going to leave as default and we're going to go ahead and click next. Believe it or not, now we've completed the hard part. We've entered in all of our settings for our vCenter 8 server. And now all that's left to do is review the summary screen. If you are happy with all your settings, go ahead and click on finish. Now deploying the virtual machine does take a little bit of time. So I'm going to pause the video and we'll come back shortly. 
And in the blink of an eye, stage one is now complete. Actually, it took a little bit longer than a blink of an eye. Anyway, stage one is complete. Let's go ahead and click on continue. We're now at stage two and we just have a few more little settings to enter in here and then we're complete. So let's go ahead and click on next. Here we're going to go ahead and set some NTP servers. So I'm going to change deactivated to synchronize time with NTP servers. I've entered in two NTP servers that I'll be using. I'm going to be leaving SSH access as deactivated now. We can enable this later on and I'll go ahead and click next. We're now going to be setting up our single sign on domain. For our domain name, I'm going to be using the default of vSphere.local. And now we're going to be giving our administrator account a password. The same logic applies as I previously mentioned, make it as secure as possible. Once that's done, let's hit that next button. Here it's asking us if we want to opt into the VMware Customer Experience Improvement Program. Hell yeah, we want to do that. I'll leave mine and join and I'll click on next. We're at the last step of stage two. Again, we're presented with a summary of all of our settings. If it all looks good, let's go ahead and smash the finish button. A warning pops up saying that we cannot pause or stop this process. I'm okay with that and therefore I'm going to click on OK. This process also takes a little bit of time, so I'm going to pause the video and be back shortly. Stage two is now complete. That URL up on screen will take you to the landing page for vCenter 8. We're going to go ahead and click on that right now. We're going to bypass all this certificate stuff and here we're going to want to click on that launch vSphere client. Let's log in with our administrator account. For the username, we need to put administrator at vSphere.local and then the password that we entered in during the setup wizard. Congratulations guys, this is vCenter 8. Now we need to add in some ESXi hosts. And if you've never installed ESXi before, go and check out this video. It's an installation and configuration of ESXi 8. However, we are going to stop the video now because this was just the initial step to get our vCenter deployed and it's going to be the baseline for some of our future videos. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a big thumbs up and I hope that you're already a subscriber. It would mean the world to me to have you on board. And not only that, but you'll also be notified when the next video drops. That's it for today, guys. I'm out of here. We'll see you in the next video.